In this presentation, we'll look at variance and fiscal year. A variant in SAP is an item with particular properties and can be assigned to one or more objects. It follows a three-step process. First, you define the variant. For example, let's say the variant is A. Then you determine the values for the variant. So let's say I'm going to give the values for A. A is a fruit. A is red in color. Then assign the variants to the objects. So I can assign A, which is red in color and a fruit, to objects like uh, apple and apple, strawberry, cherry, and so on. So that's how this variant works in SAP. You create a variant, you assign some properties to the variant, and you can assign to one or more objects. This makes it easier to maintain the properties of the variants, which are common among several objects. You will see this use of variants when you actually go and create a fiscal year variant in the presentation. Examples of variants are fiscal year variant, posting period variant. You will see some other examples um, frequently used in the system like costing variant and so on. In this presentation, we will create a fiscal year variant. Let's look at the terminology fiscal year. A fiscal year is a company's calendar year for its financial reporting. So it's not always from January to December, but its calendar year for its financial reporting mostly has been assigned by the country's taxation laws. For example, in India, the fiscal year for corporates is from April to March. In Germany and in US, the fiscal year for corporates is from January to December. In Australia and in New Zealand, the fiscal year for corporates is from July to June. You define the fiscal year as a variant and then you assign it to the company code. So we create a fiscal year variant and then we assign to the company code. So if you are creating a company code in the US, you must ensure that you create a fiscal year variant from January to December and then assign it to the company code. If you're creating a company code in Australia, ensure that you create a fiscal year variant which is from July to June and then assign it to that specific company code. So you must make sure that your company code where it resides, which country it resides, it should match the fiscal year variant just to make it consistent. Now you have 12 posting periods, that is the 12 months of the year. Whether it's January to December, April to March, July to June, it will be 12 months of the year. And you can also have something called four special periods. At the end of the quarter, for each quarter, you can have extra period or even just additional four special periods if you want to do some postings outside of your regular financial statements. Posting period, the one I mentioned over here, the posting period is derived from the posting date. So if you have a posting if you have a fiscal year from January to December and you put and you post an item with date 15th of January 2020, then that is period one because you have defined from January to December. If your posting period is from July to June and you put a posting date such as uh, 5th of January 2020, then it will not be period one. It will be period seven because period one will be July. July, August, September, October, November, December, and then only January will come. So the period will be identified as period 7. Looks a bit confusing now, but just write it down. If you can write it down in steps and list out all the 12 months by based on the fiscal year, then you will see how the period is also assigned, aligned. So January to December, periods 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Period from July to June, also period 1 here is July. And period 2 is August. So that's how the period goes from 1 to 12. So based on each month where the fiscal year starts, the period will also start from that specific month. When you proceed to create your fiscal year variant in the system, you will see two different options. One is called year independent and the other one is year dependent or year specific. Year independent is a most commonly used one. 99% of the time you'll be using the year independent setting. Year independent can be two options, very basic, either calendar year from January to December or non-calendar year, like July to June, April to March, and so on. Year specific or year dependent is very rarely used because most is done in two exceptional circumstances. When the posting dates are different, for example, if your organization says the last Friday of that particular month is should be the last day of posting, 
and then January can have sometimes like 29 days or even 26 days if the Friday of the last date of that month falls on uh, say January 26th is a Friday and then the next Friday will be coming to February so in January you will have only 26 days for your posting dates you will not be posting anything outside of that and if you want to post something outside of January 26th say you want to post January 27th it will go to the next period again this is a very rare instance but some organizations do this where they have shortened dates for each month another option you have shortened fiscal year so let's say for example your organization is going to go live in october they only want to have a shortened fiscal year so from october to december they won't have one fiscal year and then next year they won't have from january to december or sometimes your organization might want to change the fiscal year for another period Let's say, for example, your organization currently has fiscal year from January, from um, July to um, let's say from July to June, and then you're posting, you're going live in May, and so you only have one more month for July to June, so you'll have can have one short fiscal year for that. But let's say after that your organization, because of your country's taxation laws, they are changing the fiscal year from January to December. Then you might have to readjust your fiscal year to make it shorter. And then from December onwards, you can go with the normal fiscal year. So then you can move on to a different fiscal year variant. Again, these are very exceptional scenarios. So don't worry if you're unable to understand these two scenarios. Please remember the most commonly used one is using the year independent one. And most likely your organization will also be using this fiscal year variant option, either the calendar year or non-calendar year. Now let's look at maintaining a fiscal year variant. So you come to the SPRO menu path and you come to financial accounting section over here, financial accounting global settings, ledgers, fiscal year and posting periods. You can also use a direct transaction code OB29 and then come to maintain fiscal year variant. So let's click on that. And you can see there are already pre-existing fiscal year variants available in the system. Now let's look at each of these columns. The first column means it's a calendar year. So if it's been ticked like this, it means it's a standard calendar year from January to December. If it's not ticked over here, it can be different periods. For example, someone has already mentioned in the description, this one is April to March. And this is also from April to March. And you can specify that in the period and period text columns over here. So first tick over here means it's a calendar year from January to December. The second one is year dependent. This is a rare scenario which I mentioned to you earlier. The shortened number of days in a posting period or in a month or the shortened fiscal year option. So this is very rarely used. So hence I would recommend not to go and tick this. And here you specify number of posting periods. Generally you will always have 12 periods and you can have up to 4 special periods. So let's look at this one. So we are going to use another example for the US based scenario. The calendar year is from January to December. So I can use this one called K4 fiscal year variant. This is readily available in the SAP environment. So I'm going to select that. You can see it's calendar year ticked, 12 normal periods and four special periods. So this is ideally for me. I'm going to select that. And then let's go to period text over here. So you don't have to define the periods because by system default, when you tick this itself, system we know it's a calendar year from January to December. Let's look at the text over here. Double click on that. And you can see language DE is for German. And you can see the periods are given here and the description is given here. So if you just scroll down, you'll find English also coming up. That is EN is coming over here. 1 is for January, you can see period 3 is March, 1 is for Jan, short text is Jan, long text is January, 2 is Feb, and short long text is February. So like that, all the 12 months are mentioned over here. So period 1 is January, period 2 is February, going in line with the calendar year. You can see all the 12 periods over there. So you don't have to do any more changes, we can keep it as it is. If you want to copy an existing fiscal year and you want to put your own fiscal year variant name, you can do that. Simply click on this line over here and press this button. It will copy and then you can give your own two character ID for that. And that will be creating your own fiscal year variant. We will continue to use a K4 fiscal year variant. 
Now, if you are living in a country where your fiscal year variant is not from January to December and you want to create your own fiscal year variant, then I'll show you how you can create your new fiscal year variant. The easiest approach is to copy an existing fiscal year variant. So you don't have to go and fill up all the information. You simply have to change some certain details. So, for example, if you're living in the Australia, New Australia and New Zealand region or any other country where you use a fiscal year from July to January, July to June, just simply scroll down and find a suitable fiscal year variant. Usually the letter which starts with V, SAP has already given some pre-existing one, so you can continue to use that. So starting with V over here, you can see V3, you have already got in the system, April to March, V6 has got from July to June. So let's go and you also have V9 from October to September. Most likely you'll, your country will fall into one of these three. So let's look at V6, July to June, and it's already got the 12 posting periods, four special periods, that's good. You should not tick any of these, remember, this is only for January to December, and this is only for the year-dependent areas, which you will you'll be using, so do not tick this. Let's copy this, click on this icon over here. And here you need to give your own ID, don't use the same ID, and don't use something that's already existing also. So I'm gonna call it Z6 over here. Press enter in your keyboard and say copy all and number of dependent copy that's fine now let's go to z6 over here which i've just copied and then let's look at the periods just to make sure it's all aligning correctly so your period one should be july period two should be august and so on just save the data it will generate a transport request that's fine proceed with that and wait till it comes let's click on period again here it is so you can see period one the month one that is a standard system calendar month so that is january has 31 days two has 29 days february has 29 days if it's a leap year it's just all better to put all the 29 over there three is march 31 days april 30 days may 31 days now this is where the period starts from now here you can see something called a year shift so what you need to do is if your fiscal year is starting from july then july is your period one you can see period one is july so let's show you here scroll up a bit july July is period 1 over here. The 7th month of the calendar year is July. It has 31 days. That should be your period 1. Then August should be period 2 for you. Similarly, next month, September is period 3, period 4, period 5, period 6. So December is period 6 for you, 31 days. So what happened to January? So the next January you will be having should be your next period, period 7. January is period 7. But the year will be the next year. So for example, you are in the year 2020. Uh, July is period 1 for you. And in 2021, January is period 7 for you. So you need to put plus 1 over here. Now in this example, they put minus 1, but we will use plus 1. Again, don't worry if you're not in this region where you're having different fiscal years, but this is the standard settings used in the system because when you put your fiscal year from July to June or April to March, you always put the next year should the the next calendar year month should be in the uh, next year. That's why you have to put plus one over there. If it's a bit confusing, don't worry, just follow these steps. You will realize when you actually run your financial reports that why it makes sense later. And just one more over there let's press ok to continue you can close this information box and here this one plus one that's it and simply save the transaction that's it so this is how you can create your own fiscal year variant Um, press again this tick mark and now it's saved and you can go you can press this also just to make sure it saves again 
not in increasing order that's fine press ok and you can view your view your fiscal year variant over here july to june special periods 12 posting periods and 4 special periods that's a description you can keep using the same description or you can put your own description here as well and that's how you can create your own fiscal year variant next you can perform the edit fiscal year calendar that is this transaction over here simply click on that and here enter the fiscal year variant which you have created or which you have currently using if you're already using one in the system you don't have to do it because somebody would have already generated this for you but if you have created something new you can put that fiscal year variant over there you can select that it automatically coming up over here and just simply execute this transaction and it once it goes out okay it's been the fiscal year has been generated that means for future fiscal years it will get updated with the this variant it's just a system run only so we don't going to see any specific output but this step is just important if you have created a new fiscal year variant next you're going to assign the company code to the fiscal year variant in our previous presentation we saw how to create a company code now we need to assign the fiscal year variant to this company code to ensure that this particular country the company code you have created is going to use the fiscal year of that particular country so i'm going to select this option over here and then let's go to our company code so if you see there already there's so many available in the system so to go to the company code we created click on the position button over here this is very useful to use this position button because it can directly take you to the option which you want to go to company code i have already created one company called m001 so let me use that one over here it's m001 over there and press ok to continue there it is. So I have not assigned the fiscal year variant. So let me assign the one over here. And now let's assign that K4 over here. And then simply save the transaction. That's it. It will generate a transport request because these are all configurations. So it will generate a transport request. Just press OK to continue. So we have now assigned the company code to the fiscal year variant. So in this presentation, we saw what is a variant, how a variant can be used. It's a three-step process to create a variant. And we saw how we can create a variant. So we created a fiscal year variant. We used an existing variant K4 for January to December. And then we created our own fiscal year variant Z6. So we defined the variant. We assigned some values to the variant, saying that this variant is going to be used from July to June. And we put the necessary months and the fiscal year, sh year shifts as well. And then we assign this variant to the company code. Those are the three step process. And we saw different type of fiscal years we are available. One is a year independent, which is the most commonly used one. And the other one is year dependent one. And year independent one, you can either use a calendar year or a non-calendar year. And then in the other step we did, the configuration was to assign the fiscal year to company code. So please follow these two steps. Create your own fiscal year variant and then assign your fiscal year variant to your company code.